uh, in this column, we have the quantitative variable that is the casein concentration. Uh, we have uh, five whey protein samples which were analyzed in three separated classes, as I am showing here. Uh, in the previous video, uh, we deleted the outlier results. Outlier results were taken out in using box plots. Well, here uh, I am showing the descriptive, the descriptive statistics of this data set. Uh, that is the same as grid suite number two, but uh, outlier results were deleted. Uh, we have in here the descriptive statistics. For example, uh, whey, whey, whey protein sample C, uh, we have 18 measurements. The number of measurements we're showing here um in here we have the mean values uh, standard deviations interquartile range variances uh, the p value of shapiro wilk minimum and maximum value show uh in here we just need to go to we just need to go to plots and the assignated the box plots and the others elements uh we can see here that there is no outlier results. And we can see some uh, difference between the average values and the mean values. We can see difference. Uh, we can see that uh, whey protein uh, go uh, has lower protein content than uh, the whey protein E. We can do some observations. Well, uh, we have five whey protein samples. Uh, I'd like to analyze, com uh, com compare the protein content in these five samples. Uh, how could I compare uh, more than two means? Uh, I have five samples. I'd like to compare these five samples. Well, I, I can compare two samples using a t-test but when I have more than two samples, I must use uh, one away and other. Well, if I'd like to compare this, this average values, we can look in here. Uh, we have a close average values. Uh, the average values are very close in numbers. Uh, we could do this comparison using one away and other. For example, I can do one away and other uh, of this data set, and it provides to me a p-value lower than 0 0.05. Uh, it means that we don't have equivalent means. Uh, I can visualize the specific difference between these this means uh, using a descriptive plot. You just need to go to... Um, we can go to descriptive plots and place samples in here. And it, we must assignate confidence intervals. And they can see that this sample has higher protein content than the other samples. These three samples have a close uh, casein percentage, uh, protein percentage, uh, where the sample go has lower protein content than all the other samples we might do uh i we can visualize the difference between more than two groups uh using descriptive plots uh the one away and over just provides a p value a p value uh higher than 0 0.05 shows that the means are equivalent a p-value lower than 0 0.005 shows that we don't have uh, equivalent means. A uh, specific difference between the means uh, might also be visualized using post hoc tests. You can go to, to, to JASP and you can go to descriptive plots, post hoc tests. You select post hoc test, put samples in here, and we can do the post hoc test using two key, 
2K, Chef, Bonferroni, Home, and CDAC corrections. Uh, we can see uh, that this table provides uh, equivalent results to we can see using descriptive plots. We can also do uh, high cloud plots. Just JASP can do high cloud plots. Uh, JASP shows in here the uh, ash point is a, is a measurement, and in here we have the box plots, and in here we have the Gaussian distribution, the distributions, distribution functions of the data obtained, uh, as I can see here. Uh, something that's very important when you do when you do one away and over is the assumption checks. You already know that this data set is normally distributed. You already know that this data set is normally distributed, but I must see if the variances are equivalent. If it was not equivalent, we can do the, the brown, frost, uh, correcting, and the Welsh corrections. Uh, I might have simulated these corrections in here. Uh, and you can see that uh, we are one away and over. Now he's recalculating the one away and all without using any correction and using these corrections. Uh, we have equivalent results using these corrections, but the assumption checks already shows to me that uh, that the variances are homogeneous. For example, I can do assum assumption checks. And I may do homogeneity tests. Uh, the homogeneity tests uh, verificate if the variances in these three groups were equivalent. And it provided a p value of 0922. It shows that uh, we have the equivalent variances. So it is a manner that you can use to, to compare uh, your data set. Uh, and now I'd like to compare, uh, I'd like to compare the Kazan percentage obtained in different days. Uh, how could I do that? Well, I do one away and over for the data set in three different days. Uh, the p-value provided uh, is lower than 0 0.05. It shows that uh, the results obtained in three different days were not equivalent. But do not forget to assumption checks. Uh, so you, are, you have to do the Levini test, and the Levini test shows to me that uh, results obtained in three different days has equivalent variances. Um, I can and here, more than two groups and they can compare just two groups using descriptive plots. The descriptive plots uh, clearly show that results in class one and two are very close. However, results in class three is very different from results obtained in class two and class one. It is a, a manner that I can see that see in, in three separated classes, the results obtained in a, uh, in a third class is slightly higher than the protein percentage determined in the other two classes. Um, we might do post hoc tests to calculate what we can easily observe in descriptive plots. Um, in here, uh, I have the high cloud plots. Uh, just JASP do high cloud plots. Uh, we have the the measurements for obtained in ash class in here. Uh, box plots were shown here, and the distribution that the function distributions of these data sets were shown here. Uh, we can clearly see using descriptive plots or box plots that these two means are close 
And these mean is higher than these other two, that is class one and class two. Uh, the post hoc tests show exactly the same thing that they can see using high cloud plots uh, and descriptive plots. Well, this is a manner to do one away and other. When you, when you thus uh, one away and other, you, you want to compare more than two means. We're going to compare more than two means. You must use uh, one away and other. Uh, another thing that's very important is that when you are working with a data set, for example, the data set provided in here, uh, there is there is no uh, that is just variables are not related. Uh, just variables are not related. So when you have more than two means and the data was not related, uh, we just do one away and other. Uh, another thing that's very important to say at this point uh, is uh, Another thing that's very important to mention at this point is that uh, one away ANOVA just provides uh, just provides uh, a p value. Uh, if this p value is lower than zero zero point zero five, you can say that your means are not equivalent. But you cannot say exactly uh, where this difference lies. Uh, you can see where these different lines using descriptive plots, uh, rank, uh, rank, rank load plots, as you can see here, it is clearly that uh, sample E has a larger, uh, has a larger protein content than other samples. Well, this video talk about of the data set in Spirit Suite number three, and we can, uh, when we can, can show in the next video, two away and other.